Sometimes in your code, you want to write a symbol which is just meant to be a symbol. It's not meant to resolve into a var in a namespace. Or you want to write a list which is not meant to be a function call. You just want it to be a list. So that's why we have the special form quote. What a quote does is it has an expression and it simply returns that expression as is. There's no evaluation of that expression. It just stays the way it was when the reader handed it to the evaluator. So here in the top example, we are quoting the symbol George. So George is not resolved in the current namespace. It's not resolved at all. It's just the symbol George. And so when we call fish, the argument is the symbol George. That's the value passed to fish. In the second example, the quoted expression is a list, starting with the symbol foo and containing another list uh, with the symbol bar and then the number three. The symbol foo and the symbol bar are not resolved and the lists in which they are contained are not function calls, they're just lists. So fish here is being called with a list starting with the symbol foo and containing another list and the number three. The def special form is what we use to create or modify symbol var mappings in the current namespace. First you specify the name, a symbol, and then you specify the object which is going to be stored in the var mapped to that symbol. So in this top example here, we are creating a symbol var mapping of the symbol beetle to some var containing the object 3. If the current namespace already had a symbol var mapping with the symbol beetle, then what this does is it modifies that var so that it contains this object and not whatever it had before. In the second example, we're taking this vector and we are storing it in a var mapped to shark in the current namespace. And again, if the current namespace already had a mapping to shark, then this is modifying that var, not creating a new one. The special form dot is used to call Java methods, either static methods or instance methods. To call a static method, you specify the class as a symbol, and you specify the method as a symbol, and then you provide the arguments as expressions. So for instance, if I have some class cat and it has a static method meow, then I can call it by writing dot cat meow. To invoke an instance method, it's the same deal, except in place of specifying a class as a symbol, you simply just have some expression that evaluates into an instance object. So say if I write dot foo bar 3 1, then assuming foo is not the name of some class, which is unlikely because it's not capitalized, then this is a call to the method bar of the instance foo with the arguments 3 and 1. And again, understand that this can be any expression as long as it evaluates into an object of an appropriate type. So again, here we're calling the method bar with the arguments 3 and 1, except now the instance object is whatever is returned by the function ack. Do take note here that this means in Clojure you can make totally dynamic calls to Java methods, or at least Java instance methods. Because Clojure is a dynamic language, the only thing that's known for sure uh, with when the compiler reads this is that the method is going to be called bar. Other than that, the types are up for grabs. You can be specifying arguments that it has no idea what they're going to be until runtime. And again, the instance is specified maybe by some expression where it has no idea what's going to be returned until runtime, so it can't actually identify a method until maybe the very last minute. The special form new is what we use to instantiate Java classes. You simply specify the class as a symbol, and then you follow it with whatever arguments are appropriate for the constructor. Notice that I wrote the class names here fully qualified with their package names. It is possible in Clojure to import classes such that you don't have to fully qualify their names but their packages, but we'll discuss that later. Earlier I was saying that the standard library enclosure is missing a lot of stuff you typically expect to find because in Clojure if you want to do something you can always just use the libraries already existing in Java. On the other hand there are a number of things in the Clojure standard library which you normally expect to find in a language as operators. For instance, the arithmetic operations in Clojure are actually just functions in the standard library namespace called Clojure.core. So here, for example, we have a call to the addition function and the multiplication function. Notice that their names are just a addition sign and a multiplication sign, but that's legal because, as I said earlier, symbols in Clojure don't necessarily have to be alphanumeric, so they can just be, say, a plus sign. Now, I'm sure you're looking at this and thinking, hey, it's going to be very inconvenient if every time we call one of these functions, we have to prepend it with its namespace name. So is there any way we can avoid that? 
Well, first let's consider how you actually change what the current namespace is and how you actually even create a namespace. Here we're calling the function in-ns, which stands for in namespace, and we're calling it with the argument of a symbol alligator. What this does is switches the current namespace to the namespace alligator. If there is no namespace alligator before this, then well, it's created. So then in the next line, when we have a def, we are adding to the current namespace, which is the namespace alligator, not whatever it was before. Next, we call the standard library function printline in the namespace closure.core, and we specify the argument Harry, so we're going to print whatever is in Harry. And because we're still in the namespace alligator, Harry here is automatically going to resolve to Harry in the namespace alligator. However, let's say we next switch to another namespace, which we call Trout, and then we try and make the same call the print line. Harry is not going to resolve to alligator slash Harry, it's going to resolve to Trout slash Harry. And assuming Trout has no symbol in it of that name, then we're going to get an error. The evaluator is going to throw an exception. So that's what it means to be in a current namespace, and that's how we switch between current namespaces. But we still haven't explained how do you use the symbols from other namespaces without having to qualify those names or having to switch to those namespaces. The answer is that symbol var mappings in namespaces actually come in two kinds. A symbol var mapping is either interned or it is referred. An interned mapping you can think of as the normal kind of mapping. It's the kind created or modified by def. It is the symbol or var mappings which are the true members of a namespace. A referred symbol var mapping is one you can think of as borrowed from another namespace. A referred mapping is not a true member of the namespace, it's just there for the sake of convenience, so you don't have to fully qualify so many names. So let's say we have two namespaces, cat and dog, and let's say that the namespace cat has a single interned symbol var mapping of the symbol mittens to some var, and the namespace dog has two interned mappings of the symbols spot and rover. And let's say that when we're in the namespace dog, we want to also use the stuff from cat without having to fully qualify those names. So what we're going to do is we are going to refer the interned vars of cat into the namespace dog. What we end up with is the namespace dog sharing the same mapping of the symbol mittens to a var that cat has. It's just that in the namespace dog, it's referred rather than interned. It's there for the sake of convenience, but it's not a real member of the namespace. And be clear here that the symbol mittens and its associated var you see in both namespaces are actually the very same objects. There's not two vars here, there's just one, pointed to by the same symbol mittens in both namespaces. Now let's say we have this other namespace called bird, and it has a single interned mapping with the symbol poly. If we then refer the mappings of the namespace dog into the namespace bird, this is what we get. Only the interned mappings of dog end up as referred mappings in bird. So the referred mapping mittens in dog is not referred into bird, just spot and rover. So now that we've done this, when bird is our current namespace, we can use spot and rover from the namespace dog without having to qualify their names. You don't have to write dog slash spot, you can simply write spot.